Hello, Scott. Hi. How are yeah. you? I'm fine, thank you. That's good. Are you? Uh, not too bad. It's a, it's a great pleasure to speak to you. It's, um, South Africa is far enough down south uh, to be a new territory for you. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, well, it, it's far enough south for, to mean we haven't got down there yet. <laughs> Yeah, no, we have lots of sunshine, so uh, uh, reason enough, if not for the music. But uh, as I say, more importantly, congratulations. I think, um, as I say, we never got to speak to you on Recorded in the State LP. Um, so we figured we'd, we'd make up for it, uh, you know, with the with the works project coming up. Cool, cool. But um, I'm, I must admit, I've been sitting um, with, uh, with the new single, uh, uh, um, since well, since last week, and um, mm -hmm. a, a great progression from from uh, from the recorded in state LP. How would you how would you describe it by comparison to that first album and the early EPs? Um, I don't I don't know. I think I think we well we we I mean we've tried we we would try to make a sort of different record each time, not not just out of caprice, but because we're kind of in a different place when we come to making a new record, and I think I think we kind of see the whole thing as a a bit of a learning process, and also as a kind of um, uh, just a statement of where we feel we might be or what we might be thinking about at any given time. So, um, but it's, it's difficult to describe specifically how we kind of feel we've um, changed between one record and the next. I mean. I think one of the things was that, um, not so much in terms of release, but recording, there was a big gap between the first LP and the second one, mm. uh, because we we recorded the first LP a sort of year, a year to a year and a half before it actually came out. Mm. So um, we, you know, we basically changed a bit. Um, and we'd we'd gone out and played a lot of shows last year as well. Mm. So I think we just felt like we were coming at the the whole project from a very different kind of standpoint than we did with the first record. Mm. Was it was but it directly? Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, so was it easier? Yeah, um, was it a, an easier album to put together than say the first? No, it was massively more difficult <laughs> 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 because the first record was much more a, a traditional first record for a band kind of approach. We'd played the songs for the first record live. Um, we performed them. We had a fairly clear idea about how we wanted those um, to end up on tape. Whereas the, the main thing with this record, and it's taken, I don't know how many times, longer to make this record than it did the first one. Um, but we went in there with um, a whole bunch of material which was unfamiliar. Um, and it then was a case of, of, of piecing together how we wanted this record to sound. And, um, what what kind of overall thing we wanted to to kind of reach toward on this record? So, but it was you know I often I often think it's it 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 does feel very strange sometimes that you know the 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 music well certainly for this record and we, it was consciously the the situation we wanted to make the record this way but we didn't actually know the songs okay. we didn't know the tracks and that's the time when you put them down onto tape and now we're starting to perform them and getting really mm. familiar with them. Mm. It's kind of a bit bizarre because you think, well, we kind of recorded them at a the time when we didn't really know the songs that well, but mm. that was that was the way we wanted to make this record, was to go in with a very blank sheet of paper mm. in terms of sounds and in terms of arrangements and things like that. We wanted to come in and see, see see how we wanted to put these things together. So it's much more of a studio record, I think, than right. the last record. So now we're kind of confounded because we're trying to figure out ways to actually perform these things live. Mm. Whereas before it was much it was much more of a direct kind of process. Mm. Do you, you know, do you find yourself being more aware um, of, of, of an audience now than say you, you were on the you know on, on the first E P and, and, and the singles and so on that were you know, were truly uh, indie releases to the point that you've now got, you know, the new album, which is going to be, into, you know, released internationally now through V2. Um, yeah. you know, did, did, did you find yourself sort of thinking, you know, how, you know, will this, you know, would this translate in the bigger picture or, 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 or not? Um, I'd love to be able to say no, <laughs> um, because I really don't think it's a very good way to make records. No. 
to be very aware of an audience. But I think it's impossible, at the same time, I think it's impossible not to be aware, because quite literally when, when we made our first records, we hadn't released anything. Uh -huh. So we didn't have a concept of there being any, any audience for our stuff. Uh -huh. um, so I think it does, I think you do become aware of an audience, but it's so annoying. Uh -huh. Can you hear this noise? Yeah, it's not a problem. Um, but at the same time, I don't know quite how that affects it, the music that we make, because the only the only kind of record that feels successful to us is one that is quite personal, mm. that is quite direct. You know, I mean, we're interested, we're interested very much in trying to communicate that, um, and I'm not interested in, in the kind of writing songs which are so sort of embroiled in my own personal world that they wouldn't mean anything to anybody else. Yeah. But uh, I think you do become. I think I think we've inevitably be, become aware of an audience, but I don't know how that's affected what we do. Really, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a it's a it's a more complicated process. Sure, so. and it's probably more just more subliminal, yeah, to you. But absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, to say with uh, you know with and you know having gone into the the studio as you said with with this blank sheet for the new album. Um, mm -hmm. And now looking back at it as you know, as a as a separate entity and as a, as a complete album, um, yeah. How does you know um, you know how, does it that does it work as you know as as a compendium of songs um, to tell the story about who Scott for are? Because I I perceive that um, your 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 wider audience will come with the second album, and people will then probably a lot of people will go back and revisit uh, recorded in state. Um, yeah, you know, um, does it? You know, is it is it reflective of, of of where you are at now? I think I think it does. I think I think the only thing we we went into making this this record with the only idea we went into it with was that we wanted to uh, paint a slightly bigger picture, mm. um, something that felt more complete. Um, so when we were getting towards the end of this this record, it looked like it was going to be a sort of about 19, 20 tracks, mm -hmm. cut it down, but we felt we wanted to paint a kind of complete picture about what it's all about, and looking back, I think that's that's pretty much what we did, and we, we felt quite pleased that we were actually able to take some elements out of it, and still retain this kind of feeling of completeness, mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think, like we were saying about, earlier about sort of awareness of an audience mm -hmm. and stuff, I think, um, what we felt about the first record in, term, in comparison to this one was that maybe it gave out uh, a, a, a more one-dimensional element of yes. what the group were about. Yes. And this one feels like it's it's kind of given a more complete kind of picture. So, oh. I mean, I think also, you know, just a lot of things have changed for, for us in, in, in the sort of two years between making the two records. Right. Right? Any, anything that sort of stands out in particular? Well, um, I mean, the the first the, the, the first songs that I that I was writing um, were were to do with a whole bunch of kind of experiences from from a couple of years before, and a lot of it was uh, a lot of a lot of the first record has felt kind of quite cathartic, and mm. I think it was kind of exercising some demons and mm. I think I think there's an element that in this, in this current record but they're very they're different demons really mm. Mm. Um, but um, um, I've, lost, I've lost the thread a bit now. I don't know where I was going <laughs> no, not a problem and um, uh, and uh, just as far as you know each of you are concerned as uh, as members um, you know be, being a tight unit that you are um, you know, have you have you discovered things about one another just from a you know, from a musical perspective that you've been able to um, include on this album and say you hadn't on the first? Definitely, definitely. I mean, I think that that was that was one of the other that was one of the other big differences with this record over the last one was um, I think with the with the first record we much more felt we much more made it in the in the field whereby there were certain areas of expertise which we kind of stayed in. Whereas with this record, it was very much more fluid. So um, there were no real, there were no really strongly sort of defined areas where where the, uh, the three members of the group might be working. We all did, we all kind of crossed over into each other's territory and did different things. So, um, you know, I, 
I, like on the first record, I kind of sang the whole thing. Mm. Um, and on this record, John sings some of the tracks. Uh, Ed, Ed's been really kind of involved in kind of getting to grips with the kind of vagaries of primitive drum machines and things mm. like that for mm. this record, and, and kind of got involved in that. But you know, we've all we've all kind of uh, played sort of every different instrument along the way mm. to kind of to get the record together as well. So it was. Yeah, it was it was much more kind of open out in that sense as well, I think. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I must admit the the one thing that strikes me about, about Scott Four is very much um, even on the album. I mean, unfortunately, I haven't I haven't seen you in a live environment, but um, right. the the recording comes across uh, very much as being uh, done in a you know with very much of a of a live feel to it, um, in the sense that. Um, you know, it, 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 as much as you say that even with a new album sounding, you know, being very much a studio album, the essence of the band is very much um, that uh, bright um, live feel uh, to the track. Yeah. Well, I think I think what we what we always try to do is we don't we like we like the recording process to be quite direct. Mm. We like we like the we like to try and work from the stage of the idea to the. To the music ending up on tape to be as short as possible, mm. so that there's a spontaneity there, mm. so there's still freshness. We don't, we're not, we don't like, we don't like to make recordings when we feel like we know this thing so inside out mm. that it's like kind of second nature to do it. Mm. So we like to do something that feels quite fresh and that you don't always, well, what you're doing at the time, you don't, you don't know every single facet of it as yeah. you're doing it. So mm. in terms of performance. It's still something that's quite unfamiliar because that can bring up, you know, it it, it kind of makes you improvise in a way. If, mm -hmm. You know, if it's something that you're not so familiar with, and the, the the choice is then to take the bits that work out of that and reject the bits that don't. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that was that was uh, something that was much more core to this record than the last one. But I, but I think that's also core to um, yeah to, to people who, who you know who, who will buy you know buy the albums as well as that. Um, there are so many layers to what's actually happening on the record. I mean, with with it being, um, to say, having this this very sort of almost rough, or, uh, you know, roughness to it, or or, or an edge yeah. to it, um, and then yeah. you and then you've thrown in sort of you know electronic elements as well, which sort of throws you a little. But the, the beauty of it is that every time you go back to the album, and um, you're getting something different, which um, I think is you know sadly lacking. You know, with a lot of bands today, um, and it's almost yeah. to say each yeah. listen is an adventure. Well, I mean that that would that would be our definition of a success. Yeah. In terms of making a record, I think. Mm. You know, if, if that if that's the way if that's the way it comes over, then uh, like you say, there there is a there's still a raw kind of element to it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, if I mean if if people do pick out those different textures, then I think we, we kind of feel like we've, we've done our job right. Mm. And I think also to say, I think one of the one of the great elements as well is that you can't really place it. Which um, um, I was um, actually speaking to uh, an American um, artist by the name of Shelby Starner um, yesterday, and uh, right. you know, I mean, I think uh, the, the British probably more so than the Americans love to pigeonhole what artists Absolutely. do. Um, you can't do this with Scott Fall. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's 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 what we keep saying. <laughs> People in the British press keep trying to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they can't do it, which I think is fantastic. Well, I think I think the only the only thing in terms of those categorizations in terms of the British press that I really like is that we've been compared to so many different things now. Okay. That maybe if you took the whole list of you know a hundred different things that we've been compared with, mm. then maybe out of that confusion, it would tell you something about the group. Yes. But um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah, and uh, obviously, as you say, you, you're playing live. The album's being released next month. Um, obviously, a busy time for you. Uh, yeah, well, it always seems to be a busy time for us. Um, I think because I think a lot of the, the lot of the a lot of the way we go about sort of being Scott Four, um, it, we make a lot of work for ourselves along the way because we try to keep things very close to the core. Mm. We try to not farm things out. We don't use producers. Mm. Uh, we don't bring people in to do the artwork. Mm. Um, so we try to do as much of it ourselves 
as we possibly can, which I think is something else that has become less and less common. I think yes. a lot of us tend to sit back and let other people get on making their records um, for them, and we're, we're not really very interested in doing that. Well, no, I mean, I, I think with artists that have done that, and I mean, I've seen them myself time and time again, the, the levels of insecurity go through the roof and, and the whole creativity aspect sort of, you know, uh, falls through the floor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's, it's a kind of difficult thing to hold together. Mm. Um, and like I say, that we kind of always feel, we always feel like we're very busy, but I mean, right now is a, a kind of time when, yeah, we kind of finally sort of, wipe the sleep out of our eyes <laughs> being locked away sort of in a studio for six months mm -hmm. uh, and it's very much about trying to get out there and sort of interpret this thing mm -hmm. sort of live now. Mm -hmm. and to, to the but point sort of sorry sorry well that that'll that'll be one of the major things for the rest of this year but also um i think we'll we'll definitely be going off and doing some north and Scott Ford music as well because mm -hmm. uh, we've we set up our own studio and our own label so the next thing will be to expand the label to, to record some non Scott Paul music to put out on the Folk Archive label, whether it be involved in that the Scott Paul or whether it be uh, other other artists who so, would like to, to, to put, put some records out by as well. Oh, that's great. So, I mean, the whole thing is growing at a rate of nuts. Mm. Mm. Great. It, a lot of it is just trying to find the time to, because last year we, there were a couple of other groups that we wanted put out records by but it just just didn't turned happen. out that we just literally couldn't find the time to mm. actually sit down and do it. Mm. Mm. Well as I say, I mean it certainly sounds like uh, it's uh, as you say, I mean it's, it's it's always busy but I think uh, a, a dynamic time if, if, if nothing else because um, I think um, certainly with the new album I mean I've um, I've got uh, five tracks um, of that so far. Um, right. And um, I I think this is certainly the album that's going to probably um, open you to, um, you know, an, an audience uh, beyond Europe and the UK as well. Yeah, well, we very much hope that to be the case. Mm. Really, yeah. mm. To the point that we can get you down to South Africa and you can come and enjoy some. Well, you don't need sunshine now because you've got your own. But uh, well, when it gets cold, an English, an English summer is a fairly patchy affair. At the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, throughout last year we we were. We were kept being tempted with the idea that we were going to be able to travel outside Europe and go on places and places, and then <coughs> there were always last-minute reasons why it didn't come to pass, which was kind of annoying to us, really. Well, this time we'll make sure that it happens, yeah. Excellent. And wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time, Scott. It's much appreciated. Okay. Pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay, then. Bye. Bye-bye.